My brothers and sisters, we've begun Holy Week. So since Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent, we've been preparing for this most sacred time of our church year. So today, we began recounting how our Lord entered triumphantly in Jerusalem, and now we have read the Passion, which really sets the stage for the other events that unfold during this Holy Week, culminating in Easter next Sunday. And so we began at Mass. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. And so this week, with all faith and devotion, we enter into these mysteries. We commemorate them. But in using that word commemorate, we aren't just remembering past events that occurred almost 2,000 years ago. No, we are living these events, for they are living events. What Christ has done for us lives on. It touches us now. And so this week is truly meant to be a holy week when you and I live these events again and open our hearts to the abundant graces that our Lord offers to us. Oftentimes, we refer to ourselves as the disciples of Jesus. And so we are by virtue of baptism. And yet, when we look at the gospel today, the passion narrative, to see those apostles is really quite troubling. Think of what goes on. The passion of St. Mark begins with this anointing scene. Traditionally, Mary Magdalene uses this very costly perfume worth 300 days wages, 300 silver pieces to anoint the head of our Lord. The apostles protest. Now St. John notes that it was Judas who protested and Judas will sell our Lord for 30 pieces of silver. Betrayal. And then comes the Garden of Gethsemane. Here our Lord is praying in anguish and they fall asleep. Then when the soldiers come to arrest our Lord, they flee. They leave Jesus by himself. At the crucifixion, where are they? Not to be found. Oh, and let's not forget St. Peter. Outside Caiaphas' home, St. Peter waits and he denies our Lord not just once, three times. Here at the Last Supper, Peter said, oh, even if their faith is shaken, mine will never be shaken. Even if I have to die for you, I will not deny you. And in his human weakness, he denied our Lord. Not once, three times. Well, my brothers and sisters, yes, the apostles, those first disciples, leave us with a very troubling image. Of course, we remember, though, that after Easter, they're the ones that continued the mission of our Lord. Nevertheless, here we are now, and we look at those disciples, and we ask ourselves, well, what about us? After all, wouldn't we have to admit that at times, you and I, too, have fallen asleep on Jesus, not taken time to pray, being distracted at Mass, just allowing our minds to wonder, not taking time to do any spiritual reading, like reading sacred scripture. We've fallen asleep. And at times, too, we have fled, fled the opportunity to make a sacrifice for our Lord, to do some good sacrifice, some good work, to help others, but in so doing, helping him. We, too, have denied our Lord, just as St. Peter did, when maybe people that we know at work, school, neighborhood, mock our church, ridicule our faith. Maybe we've joined in. Maybe we've been silent. Pope Benedict says that when we are silent and we're worried about other people's opinion, that's when evil triumphs. And then perhaps we've been absent from the cross, meaning absent from this mass, because this mass is the sacrifice of the Mass. And then, of course, 
we have probably been like Judas too, meaning that we've sinned. We've sold our Lord. So sin is really selling our Lord for something we think at that moment is more precious. So my brothers and sisters, we have to admit we're the frail disciples too. But during this Holy Week, we open ourselves to these graces, not only to renew that discipleship, but to become stronger in faith. So rather than being asleep this week, we're called to be awake, to take time to pray. Now, I know that during this week, Loudoun County schools are off, so we have more time to spend with our Lord. That could mean coming here for daily mass and praying, saying the rosary at home, reading sacred scripture as a family, maybe taking one of the four passion narratives and the four gospels and reading each one, one a day. Or as a family, you could even watch some of the great classic movies like The Ten Commandments, Jesus of Nazareth, The Robe, The Passion of Our Lord, although that would be for older folks. But any of those movies helps us to meditate on what Christ has done for us. Then, instead of fleeing from our Lord, be prepared to make the sacrifice. Yes, we do fast and abstain this Good Friday, but think of doing other sacrifices, helping someone in need. I encourage you especially to offer those sacrifices, that fasting and abstinence, remembering our poor Christian brothers and sisters in Iraq, Syria, and other places where they're living the passion. Right now, they are living the passion, and they need our prayers. Then, too, instead of denying our Lord, as did St. Peter, let's defend him. There will be those opportunities when we can talk about our faith. That talking may occur when one of our relatives comes to visit who's been lapsed, who hasn't practiced the faith. Well, let's talk about the joys of our faith, the goodness of our church. After all, we're the ones that have a savior. What other religion has a savior? Only Christians. And we're the church that Christ founded. Let's talk about that joyfully. And we have the Mass and the Holy Eucharist. Let's talk about that joyfully. That's what we're called to do. Not be silent, but to proclaim the goodness of what Jesus has done for us. And instead of being absent from the cross, be here. Be here Holy Thursday and Good Friday and definitely Easter Sunday. Where else would we be? Let's be with Jesus. That's the key. Take the time to be with him. And then the hardest of all, perhaps, what about Judas's betrayal, selling our Lord, allowing sin? Well, we've all sinned. But have we all been to confession this Lent? Have we taken the time for that good confession? We have confessions Monday evening, Tuesday evening, Wednesday evening, and even Good Friday evening. But unless you want to do penance in a long, long line, don't come Friday evening. Do it Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. But none of us here should come to Easter Sunday without having made that good confession. Imagine this. Judas betrayed our Lord, and he hung himself. Think how different the gospel would be if on Good Friday he stood at the foot of the cross and simply said, Jesus, forgive me. Well, what are we going to do? Hang ourselves and say, I don't need confession? Or, or will we stand at the foot of the cross and say, in confession, Jesus, forgive me? So my brothers and sisters, it's Holy Week. And our Lord offers us such abundant graces, not only to renew our faith, strengthen our faith, not only to renew our identity as a disciple, but to strengthen it. So therefore, let us make this week holy. May God bless you.